Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at another tool that I use. I spent a couple uh, weeks talking about different bookmarking and archiving tools that I use. Uh, I've talked about Evernote um, and then uh, recently I did a video on how to like search and look online uh, like a ninja and how I, my process as I search and read and, and research online. And one of the tools that I use, and I mentioned it briefly in the last video, um, but that and I didn't do a lot of focus on it was Pinboard. So previously what I would do is back in the day I would I would bookmark and try to keep track of different websites as I read and research online. Um, I thought it was problematic, we'll call it, to keep a bunch of bookmarks, basically bookmarking all of the different sites that I go to um, because I will come across either on my mobile device or on my on my web browser or my computer, I'll come across, you know, 15 to 20 websites a day and that's pretty normal um, and that's just a normal day I'm reading online I'm researching but if I'm doing some you know significant research that might be raised to you know 50 or 60 websites per day that I want to keep track of and be able to reference later um, and so previously what I would do is I would use a tool like delicious um, or Digo is another great tool that I've used in the past and one of the reasons that I would use those tools is I want to bookmark my uh, websites that I came as I came across them so that I could pick them up on my, uh, you know, find them on my mobile device and save them or find them on my computer and save them. But then whenever I went in, I could access them across multiple spaces. But then also another thing that was important to me is that I wanted to be able to share those bookmarks with others. So if it were colleagues of mine and I was doing research and I could quickly say, hey, here's all of my bookmarks about digital badges. You can read all of the materials that I've read. Um, or if I have students and they would want to, you know, see the materials I use as I prepare for classes. Um, the challenge with that is that I always felt like not a lot of people really cared, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, and so after a while, uh, what I did was I veered over to my use of Evernote. And I did a lot of materials and training uh, and tutorials, and I had a recent video on Evernote. But most of this was was closed up, and it was siloed up in Evernote. So every once in a while, I could share a note from Evernote, but for the most part, I kept it to myself. Um, because I honestly felt like people didn't care. They didn't want to see the bookmarks that I went through and as I was researching and sharing online. Uh, recently, what I've been doing is I've been changing a lot of my thinking from Evernote over to Google Docs for my writing, Google Keep for my post-it notes. Um, but then I also wanted to keep a, a, a place where I would sort of save my bookmarks over time so I could come back to these. And I wanted to make this open so that other people could also uh, take a look if they wanted to. Um, and so the tool that I use now is Pinboard. So if you look online and search for Pinboard, you'll see that it's called, uh, it's labeled as a social bookmarking uh, for introverts. The interesting thing about Pinboard is it's not free. Um, so if you look in and you search for Pinboard, what you'll notice is that um, it is a, uh, it, it includes a sign up fee or there is a yearly fee to get started. Um, so as of uh, when I first started joining Pinboard, I believe that the cost was $11 a year. Uh, that's what I pay now. Um, I don't know what the cost is right now. I think I can easily sign out and figure out what the cost is. Um, and actually, let's do that. Let's log out so I can look at this. So it's still 11 bucks a year, which is not that bad. Um, so here is the main page for Pinboard. Um, and what they build themselves as is it's quick, it's no nonsense, it's very simple, it's very minimal. The nice thing is that you can still tag and you can leave some comments um, about your links. You can pay extra, you can pay $25 a year. Um, so if I click on the sign up for $11 a year, I can create an account. So it's $11 a year for a regular account. As more people join Pinboard, that cost per account will go up. So it started off at nine or I think it was below that. Um, now it's at $11, um, but it will, uh, it will gradually elevate the, the, it'll cost more, uh, as, as time goes by, as more people, uh, join on. 
You can also pay $25 a year, which is what I do, for an archival account. The archival account, what it will do is it will save links. It will save the contents, um, not save the links, but it will save the content at those links for you. So if a website goes down um, or it changes, you can go back to your saved copy. For me and my work, I like that. Um, I honestly haven't used it. As of yet but for some reason I feel like I'm better off having it that's one of the reasons why I used Evernote in the past so I pay for the the $25 a year to have the archival version um, mainly it's just to support the developer and support the work on this so one of the things to keep in mind here is that this is not free this is something that you're gonna have to pay for this is an investment um, that is for some people um, a deciding factor uh, and, and so you have to decide on, on how you stand on this. One of the reasons why I like paying for it is, one, I wanted the, to support the developer, but also I have this general feeling that if I'm paying you, then this is a service that will, will uh, continue to be developed, but it will continue to exist. Um, and we see that happening again and again where we have these free services, and companies can decide to change the direction. So we saw this happen with Delicious, um, and then I saw recently that Pinboard purchased Delicious, but we see these companies that basically decide that they don't want to offer the free service anymore, so then you are stuck. Um, and so I value this, um, and for me it's not that big of a cost um, for my purposes, but it's something that you have to decide on. How do you feel about that? Um, for me, I'm okay with it, but there's a lot of other things that it really nags at me that I'm paying, even if it's something like $2 a year. For some reason, I'm okay with this, and I just re-upped my subscription um, about a month ago, um, and so I had to make that thought, I had to make this decision again about is Pinboard for me, and I decided to stick with it. So if I log into Pinboard, what you'll notice is it's pretty simple. Um, so up top, I'll see that I'm logged in now. You can go in, you can go to my page, and you can see all of my public uh, pins. You can see that I've I've been on here a little over a year now. I have um, you know a little over 5,000 bookmarks over that span of time. Um, what I do is as I tweet, it automatically pulls in those uh, tweets, the links in my tweets as bookmarks, so that I can keep track of things that I share. But then also what I do is, as I'm reading online, um, if I'm on my mobile device, I will save a post to Pinboard. So this is like my read it later service. So as I'm reading things, I'll save it over here from my mobile device. Or I will, in my browser, I'll click a, uh, a little extension that I'll show you and I'll save it here. So if I go through, I can see that um, as an example, do 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 here is a piece so here's a video that came through my email inbox um, something that I, I one of the listservs I'm on I wanted to watch the video I wanted to make sure that I paid attention to it but I didn't have the headspace yesterday as I was working on other projects to go in so what I did was I opened up the page I saved it in pinboard <coughs> excuse me I saved it in pinboard and now I have the link to it you can see this is the link directly to it um, these are tags so I tagged it hacking and video you can see when I uh, you know pinned this I can go in and I can edit this thing in the edit I can see the URL for the page I can see the uh, you know the title of it so here's the URL here's the title I can add a description of this as well I can tag it I can make this private so if I'd rather not people not see that I'm reading or learning or watching videos about hacking um, if you if I don't want people to see that I can click private uh, I can also click to read and then this turns it into a read it later service like instapaper or, or um, a pocket and so the nice thing is that I can sort of click on to read and then save it and then at a later date I can come in here and say okay what is stuff that's unread what are the things that I need to go back in and read so I see okay here's two things that I haven't paid attention to as of yet um, and they're all uh, this one's a year ago so um, so once again you have the link this is the title the link is behind it I have the description so I can sort of take notes on what this means I can tag it 
I can go through and see all of my other tags here and see, okay, well, what's all of the stuff that I've sort of bookmarked and tagged around, you know, Android. And so I can see I only have nine things in there. One of the reasons for this is I'm still getting in the habit of tagging things. Um, tagging on the Android app for this is a little bit of a pain. Um, I just generally bookmark things. I don't tag them as much as I'd like to. I need to work on my process. Um, but then I've noticed that an extension that I use on Chrome is helping me do this um, and, and helping me work this into my process. So there's a couple different Chrome apps or extensions for Pinboard. The one that I really like is Pinboard Plus. Um, the reason why I like it is a couple different things. One, it'll tell you, um, have you saved this before? That works sometimes works on the other uh, versions of the, the extension. What I also like about this is it gives you suggested tags. And for me, that's very helpful. So to take a look at how this looks in my work, <coughs> excuse me, one of the things we can look at is let's go over to tech meme, see what's happening today. Um, and I can go through and scroll and see what's happening uh, in the news right now. And I can take a look at, ba -ba -ba. let's take a look at this piece up here about Google Maps. I've seen this uh, area of interest has been popping up again and again and again, this moat post um, in my feed. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, why is this keep coming up? So I might want to bookmark this. Now, what I could do in the past is if I wanted to save this right away and write about it, I might save this in Google Keep. What I also might do is if this is for research or a class, I might use Hypothesis. But if this is just a general bookmark that I might want to pay attention to later, what I do is I go into my extension, click on that little bookmark uh, extension, the button, and I can see here's my URL, here's the title, here is the note. So it's automatically filling this in for me. I like that. I can go in and I can edit this if I want to. I can add tags. I can go down and, and click on the different tags that they have here, or I can add all of those tags in if I so choose. So I'm going to add Google and Maps. I can make this private or read later. And then all I do is hit submit. Then in terms of my process, what I do is I basically get rid of this because I know that this is saved over in Pinboard for me. Um, and so now I can scroll through. So the reason why this is important is in the past, I've talked about process. So for the process, what I will do is I will come across information on my mobile device or on my tablet or my browser. This information comes in through Nuzzle. It comes in through my um, Feedly RSS feed. It comes in through my listservs and my social networks and Twitter. Um, but I basically get these, you know, a lot of this information I want to make sense of. And what I do throughout the day is I curate this content. I make sense of like, okay, what's the really interesting stuff and what's the stuff that I don't really care about and I don't think that my audience will care about. So what I do is I sort of sift through all of that and make sense of it. And, and I curate to identify the good stuff from the garbage. The good stuff, the really good stuff that I think is meaningful, I will automatically tweet it out. Um, technically, it goes out through Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, and LinkedIn, all at the same time. I have a, a script set up. I have a process set up that does that for me. But I basically share out stuff that fits like the prototypical user that I think would follow me and be interested in the material or information that I share. So I automatically take the best of the best and I share that out. As I said before, Pinboard is set up to follow my Twitter feed and pull in the stuff that I share out. So it'll bookmark that, okay? So I have like a, a a trail of, of breadcrumbs, digital breadcrumbs left behind as I'm working online. What I also do is there's a lot of stuff that I think is really interesting and I want to pay attention to it and I want to look at it later, but I either don't have the headspace now or it might be something that I want to include in my weekly newsletter, but I don't want to tweet it out, okay? Um, so as an example, the, there was a WordPress attack um, a little over a day ago, I wanted to come back and see what was happening there. Um, I wanted to bookmark this thing on planning and planner templates in Evernote because some of your comments on the videos have asked me how I use or don't use Evernote now. And so I want to take a look back and see if I'm really giving good advice. Um, 
I did not share out this post by Brian Alexander about the um, about the haystack um, and the group behind haystack folding. Uh, what's the name of it? Just so that I speak from a point of understanding, so I'm correct. Um, so the NMC uh, basically folded the new media consortium, and so uh, Brian was talking about what all of this means. So I looked at that, and I'm going to talk about that in this week's newsletter. Um, and, but I did not tweet it out. So now what I do is, at the end of each week, on Thursday and Friday, when I'm sitting down and I'm putting together my newsletter, my process is I open up Pinboard. So I open up Pinboard and I sort of look through and say, okay, um, I want to talk about, you know, this and I'll open up a, that in a new tab. Um, I want to talk about this. I'll open it up in a new tab. Um, and I basically find the different things that I want to talk about and share during the week, uh, from the week in my newsletter. So I'll, I'll go through Pinboard and that is my way to keep track of what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about. Okay. You, by all means, are welcome to go in and see and use my bookmarks um, and figure out what I'm saying. Um, I can also, the fun thing is, I can go find other people um, and I can follow their bookmarks. So it is social uh, from that perspective. I can go into uh, Pinboard and I can see, you can see, so, you saw some of these are very uh, popular posts. I don't have any in front of me right now, but some of these are... There's a way to tell which posts are very popular. Um, but you can see what other people are sharing within Pinboard. So there is that social element, um, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. So you can find me, you can find other um, colleagues and friend of mine uh, that, that have Pinboard accounts. And you probably have one as well, and you can allow people to see your bookmarks over time. Um, but this is a, a really important part of my process um, to improve it right now. What I need to do is I need to do a better job with the description. I need to do a better job cleaning up the titles and also cleaning up my tagging. Um, and I and I put most of the blame on that. On uh, number one, I got to figure out for some reason my uh, the settings on here where it pulls in my tweets something changed over the last three, four weeks where now it just says Twitter and it links out to my tweet as opposed to giving me what it did before, which was the title, a description, and the link. Um, so something changed. I need to fix that. I don't like that. Um, also, uh, in terms of fixing the description and also more importantly, fixing the tags, the tags is the mo most important thing for me. Um, I blame my app on Android for that. Um, so as I'm working on my device, you can quickly see the things that I tag or, or bookmark from my computer as opposed to the ones that I do on my device. And most of my saving to pin board, it occurs on my device. And I just don't, I, I don't have the time or the headspace, um, or the gumption to sit there and type out hashtags and, and type in descriptions and stuff like that on my device. I'd rather just save it and move on. Um, so I need to possibly revisit that part of my, um, process to come back to it over time. So once again, um, that is my look at Pinboard, a tool that I use quite a bit. Um, you can find it at pinboard.in. Uh, once again, it is a paid service. It's not free. Um, I will do upcoming videos on Pocket and Instapaper. I'm thinking about possibly blending Pocket and Pinboard. Um, and, and I'll explain why. Um, but this is a really valuable tool that I use. This is a lot of what I'm using instead of Evernote. There's a lot of things that I loved about Evernote that this does not do. Um, but now I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I make this connection between a tool like Pinboard and Hypothesis and my use of Google Docs and Keep? Um, but that's another talk, a much longer talk for another day. So once again, um, all of this content is available up on my blog. You can also subscribe to my newsletter to make sure that you stay on top of all this. And by all means, hopefully this video was of value to you. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave me comments down below and have a great rest of the day.